everyone, it's me. So, so, um, hmm, how do I start? Hi everyone, it's me. So this week I wanna to talk to you guys about driving. Some of you guys know that I work at a college for the last sort of two plus years, but I have a new job. How exciting. Um, this video is not about that, I'll do another one eventually. But the new job requires that I drive because the public transportation is just not gonna work out. So I've been practicing driving the last sort of week or so and I want to, to share some of those experiences, how th I'm finding things are different and some tips for other expats who are looking to drive in England. So without further ado, let's go. Some background on driving in Canada. Um, I think driving is provincially regulated. So Canada has federal laws, but we also have provincial laws because obviously Canada is massive and some provinces are different, whatever. I'm pretty sure driving is provincially regulated. So in Ontario, we have three tests you have to do to get your license. Um, a written test, a driving test, and then a second driving test where you drive on the highway or the motorway and it's like a little bit more difficult and stuff. And you can't just like bang it out all in one weekend. There's certain times you have to wait between some of the tests. You can't just all do it at once. So I think uh, it took me maybe a year to get my full license in Ontario. I started around 16, which is the youngest. You just, you have to drive in Canada. Canada is so massive that public transportation really not that good. So right from 16, my, my dad was like, right, I'm signing you up for driver's ed, you, you gotta learn how to drive. I think if you lived in one of the larger cities, like maybe Toronto, you probably wouldn't drive because you're able to take metro or buses, or you might even have some train links. Um, but on the whole, a lot of communities in Canada, the, the buses just suck. There aren't trains nearby. We do have trains obviously, but they're not. Um, easily accessible as trains here in England. Anyways, public transportation is not so great in Canada, so you really do have to drive. Now, when I switched my Canadian license to the British license, it's like a pink card, it's got the Union Jack on it, um, it, it gives me a automatic um, British license. So I'm allowed to drive automatic cars, which is what I drove in Canada and most Canadians drive automatics. If you want to buy a manual or sometimes we call them standard cars, they're usually more expensive because they don't make as many um, manual cars and sometimes you have to go to like a special dealership to be able to get a manual car because they're just few and far between. Obviously people do drive them but they're very um, not as popular. Now just like a complete little side note, I had mentioned automatics and standards or manuals um, a couple videos back and British people were so mean like I had so many emails messages comments and they were almost all from grown British men basically telling me um, only old ladies drive automatics you don't know how to drive a real car if you drive an automatic that is so rude. I also had messages being like, you know, only real men drive manual cars. It's kind of like, if you are basing your masculinity on the fact that you drive a manual car, you probably need to reevaluate your life. You know, and maybe, maybe see a therapist because that's pretty messed up. So please just don't be rude to people who drive automatics or people who drive manuals. It legitimately does not matter. I also got a lot of messages, um, something along the lines of Americans are lazy and that's why they drive automatic. So oh, you're so lazy, you drive an automatic. It's just like, what? Do you have a microwave or do you think microwaves, oh, that's a lazy way to heat up your food. You know, I go out back and I start a fire and I put my food on the fire to heat it up because microwaves are for lazy people or I don't get vaccinated because that's for lazy people. I just let my body fight the infections, you know? Vaccinations are for lazy people. Like, who? I just don't understand. So if you drive a manual, that's awesome. If you drive an automatic, also awesome. I legitimately don't care. So if people keep commenting 
automatics are for lazy dumb Americans are for old ladies you don't know how to drive a car if you drive automatic I'm just gonna delete your comments so don't waste your time and when I first moved to England I assumed that I would need to drive here as well I've never really done public transportation never taken the bus before so what you can do is um, these refresher lessons so I booked a refresher lesson with a local driving school like driver's ed guy um, who's actually super nice he was Scottish and he was telling me all about Scotland and all and I said oh my great grandmother's Scottish and we were chatting and stuff and he was really lovely and I would definitely recommend doing a refresher lesson at least once if you are new to driving in England so I basically told him I had switched my Canadian license to the British license but I had never driven in England um, never driven on the left side of the road, never driven in a proper roundabout, and I was really, really nervous. So he was really helpful. We drove, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half, and by the end of it, he said, you know, you don't need any more lessons, you just need to get out there and practice, and you'll be fine in no time. I had just moved to England, just had my refresher lesson, and literally like a week later, I got my job at the college, and I realized that the bus routes to the college were really good. So I didn't have to drive. So we made the decision that I wouldn't drive just yet. I would take the bus, my boyfriend would have the car, um, and I could just save some money on insurance and, and things like that. Also, I was really, really nervous to drive here. Um, for those of you guys who don't know me, I have like pretty moderate anxiety. And for some reason, the idea of driving in England like really sets it off. I don't know why I've driven for years in Canada, but for some reason the idea of driving here was just really unnerving. So I was quite happy to take the bus um, and I do recommend it when you first move here because then at least you can um, settle in, get used to your job, get used to your routine. I got used to the area and now that I've been here two plus years, driving um, is a bit easier. So, fast forward two years from getting my job, I've now left my job, um, which is a whole video on itself, but this new job means that I need to drive. So, the last sort of week, I've been going out every day, every evening after work, and practicing, and practicing, and practicing. So for me personally, again, I went out every evening. Um, there are three routes to go to my new work. So I can either go through the city center or go downtown, um, go downtown slightly and then go kind of the back way or go from the motorway or the highway. Um, personally, I'm more comfortable on the highway because I just find that driving is a lot easier and it's a lot more similar to Canadian driving. Whereas sometimes the city centers or the downtowns have really funny um, road layouts and lanes kind of like branch out funny and there's lots of really tight roundabouts, roads are quite small. Um, so those are things that I still need to practice and to get better at because it, it's new to me. It's not really like that in Canada. So I've been practicing the motorway way and it's been going well. I was feeling really confident. I felt like, you know, I was getting that independence back. I used to drive tons in Canada and I felt like, you know, now I could do that here and I was feeling really pumped and really good about myself. And then naturally life was like, how about now? And I scratched a car. I scraped it up good. I was so mortified so embarrassed. I came home and like the little child that I am cried. I was so embarrassed. I couldn't believe I just scratched a car and like, like really scratched it up. So came home, had a cry in the shower. You know, who doesn't love a shower cry? Came out of the shower, had another cry. <laughs> um, I was just so embarrassed and my confidence really was gone at that point. All the confidence I worked so hard to build up was gone. So the moral I've been taking from my little accident is basically don't forget how different driving here really is. I think I sort of took my eye off the ball kind of thing. I thought, oh, I can do this. This is great. And I sort of wasn't respecting how different driving here really truly is. 
So I don't want to like freak new drivers out, freak out expats like, oh, driving here is really hard and really weird. It is very different. And I think just to keep that in mind while you're driving and don't um, underestimate how different it is. Even something as simple as, okay, yeah, we're driving on different sides of the road and that in itself you have to get used to, but you're also sitting on the other side of the car. So in Canada, you drive on the right side of the road and you're sat on the left side. Here we drive on the left side of the road and you are in the right side of the car. So something as simple as when I go to reverse, my right hand automatically comes up and my hand hits the door. I'm like, oh yeah, um, it's my left hand now. I need to reverse with my left hand and my right hand can just not do anything, just stop. So I've been typing out some differences as I notice them. Um, and I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm gonna try and like rapid fire some differences between driving in Canada and England. Um, more specifically between Ontario and Kent. Sometimes I kind of switch between saying Canada and Ontario, but like I really mean Ontario and, I'm, and I really mean Kent because that's where I'm living, that's where I'm driving. So all my observations are between those two locations. Apparently, it's quite common for expats to pull to the left um, when driving in England. Both my driving refresher instructor guy and my boyfriend said I drive too far to the left. And the instructor actually said a lot of expats do that who are used to driving on the right side of the road when they come here to England and now need to drive on the left. We pull too far to the left, like you're overcompensating. So that's one of the things I always have to keep in mind that I am more to the right than feels normal. Now, roundabouts really aren't that common in Ontario. I've only ever really seen one. And I think they put it in just to kind of be like, trendy and do something new but it was just a tiny roundabout it's one lane what's also kind of off-putting is the roundabouts in canada go the opposite direction so coming here to england one of the things i was really nervous about was doing roundabouts because it is not something that comes naturally naturally to me not something that i do in canada it was quite new territory but really once you're in the roundabout it's fine people tend to give you your space I'm still sort of learning like when to go, especially when it's really busy and traffic's really heavy. I'm like, I don't have that innate sense of, okay, go in now. So that's something that I'm still learning. But once you're in the roundabout, it's pretty much fine. Now in Canada, instead of using roundabouts to control um, the flow of traffic, we either use um, stop signs or intersections with traffic lights. Those are like our most common forms of road layouts. Now, I know stop signs exist in England, but I've not seen one. I had a friend send me a picture of one that she saw, but I don't really see them. Um, instead of having that stop sign on the end of a street, here in England, you'll have the yield um, line painted on the pavement, Those that, that like dotted line, which tells you that you have to yield to everybody else. Where in, in Canada, we would ha would have a stop sign. So the stop sign, you have to come to a complete stop and then you go when it's clear. So basically the same thing, but just in a different format. What I also noticed is there are a lot of um, traffic sign, like signage painted on the pavement in England. So if you're in a roundabout and I'm in my lane and on the pavement it says L-O-N, which means that lane is going towards London, or there might be another one that says Dover, that lane's going towards Dover. There might be arrows. Okay, this lane in the roundabout goes forward, but it also goes left. So there's a lot of signage painted on the ground, where in Canada, we don't normally have that much. Um, I think probably because we are just covered in snow and ice for so much of the year, we can't have a lot of important details painted on the pavement because we just won't see it. That's at least my guess, I'm assuming because of the snow. We do have the odd thing, like if you're in a lane, there might, it, there might be a right arrow painted because that lane turns right. Just sort of those types of things, but I find here there's a lot of stuff painted on the ground. Another thing I've noticed is the use of the national 
speed limit sign here in England. So it's a white circle with a black diagonal line through it. And depending on what type of road you're on, it will be a different speed. So when I'm driving to work, I'm on like a dual carriageway, like the proper motorway highway type driving with two lanes like going on either side and it's supposed to be 70. So that's I mean 70. But if you're on a different type of road, it will mean a different speed. For me, that was a little bit weird at first because in Canada, we really just use these big uh, speed limit signs that has the number, like quite big signs. Here in England, we use miles per hour. Well, in Canada, we use kilometers per hour, which kind of surprised me because so much of Canada has like British influence. We, we use the U in a lot of words like color and behavior. Um, we have our, you know, the queen still all on, on our money and there's just a lot of British influences. So I found it quite surprising that we would switch away from using miles per hour and we would do kilometers instead. Um, just interesting stuff. What I also find here in Kent is things are a lot faster. Like the motorway that I drive on is 70 miles per hour, which I think is like 110 kilometers per hour. Whereas I think back in Canada, um, some are 90 kilometers, some are 100, um, but I think 100 is the max I've ever seen. So the fact that on the motorway here, the limit is 70, but obviously people tend to go even faster than that. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot more speed than what we have in Ontario. Now with that, again, this is just my own personal observation. I find that drivers in Kent are a lot more aggressive than drivers in Ontario. I don't know if that's because in, in England there's so much so many more cars on the road, the roads are small, and you have to be aggressive to be able to like get where you need to go. Where in Ontario, lanes are huge, roads are really like easy to drive, um, there's less cars, so maybe there's like a less need to, to be aggressive. I don't know, but Definitely I find here in Kent a lot more aggressive. I was coming up to a roundabout and I hesitated. Honestly, I hesitated for like 0.3 of a second, like really, really short. And that was enough for the guy behind me to honk at me. <laughs> or um, yeah, people will cut you up or cut you off is what we normally say in Ontario. So people will cut you up in England, kind of just come over across. And maybe that's just the area that I live in. And maybe that's just Kent in general, but definitely a bit more aggressive. Another interesting difference, in England, you guys use learner plates and like newly passed plates, which I think is a really interesting idea and it's probably something we could use in Canada. Um, but basically, when you are learning how to drive, you get these learner plates that you put on your car and they're like a white square with a red L, I think it's red L on them. And that basically just lets other cars know that the person driving is learning. So like, you know, go easy on them. And then when you newly pass your test, you can take those ones off and put these white squares with a green P on them to show drivers, okay, you're a new driver, you have passed, but you're still a new driver. So again, go easy on them. Now in general, the roads in England are much more exciting to drive. If you are really interested in driving and you enjoy driving, I think you would really enjoy driving in England because it is exciting and there's different kinds of roads and it's kind of just a bit messy and, and, and exciting and fun. Personally, I hate driving. I drive because I absolutely have to I don't really enjoy it. So I'm kind of struggling here just because I think it is way more difficult driving here in Kent than it is in Ontario. Ontario and in Canada in general, the roads are wide. They're often straight, perpendicular, parallel to each other. They're very nicely laid out because they are quite new. Whereas in England, the roads are kind of trying to to move around the landscape and around what's been built up over the centuries. like. The roads are just trying the best that they can and they can be really difficult. Something as simple as roundabouts, no two roundabouts are the same. They are all different 
shapes. Some are really tight, some are quite big. Some have lights, like intersection type stop lights within the roundabout. Some have four exits, some have three, some have like two and like a small one. They're all different shapes and sizes. So it really just takes time getting used to them. Just like this morning, one of the roundabouts to my new job, um, now normally I would signal. So I'd signal that I'm going around and then signal that I'm coming off. And so I'm approaching this roundabout and I start to signal. My boyfriend says, no, 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 don't signal. You're just confused, everybody. This particular roundabout, you don't signal because it's shaped a little bit funny. And I'm just like, but how would I know that? <laughs> so a lot of the stuff you just pick up from practicing and being out there and experiencing all the weird and wonderful roundabouts there are. Unfortunately, I think Kent has far more traffic than I'm ever used to back in Ontario. Again, it's probably because there are so many more, more cars on the road here in, in England and the roads are much smaller, they're much less accommodating. They were never built to have this many cars, you know? We're trying to make do with what we have. So I find the traffic here in Kent can be unbelievable, especially if there's an accident. The other day, there was an accident on the motorway, um, which normally would make like quite a big deal. That's not what I mean. Like on a regular day, that would be a problem. But not only was that, there was planned construction like on the other side of the town. And because both happened, the cars had like no real wear. I'm struggling. The cars had no real way to go to get to work. So normally my journey takes 30 minutes. That particular day took over two hours just because of this traffic. Kill me now. Whereas in Ontario, we have so much more space, we have less cars and we have wider roads. I mean, definitely we have traffic and I've had some really horrible times going to work when there's been an accident and things get like really heavy, but on the whole, it's not so bad. Um, it's just something you gotta get used to in Kent. I think that's most of the um, differences I've noticed so far. I mean, I'm still practicing. Still practicing, it's gonna take me a while. I think now especially, I'm really nervous on the narrow roads, because that's where I scraped the car. On roads where it's supposed to be two-way traffic, but because there's so many cars and parked cars in a narrow street, there's only room for one car at a time. So you have to like, you drive along, you gotta stop somewhere safe, let the other person come around you and then keep going. That is quite new to me because normally the roads in Ontario are quite wide and people usually have a driveway so there's not so many cars parked on the road. Um, it's just something I'm gonna have to get used to and I think I'm just more nervous about it because I scratched the car. Just, <sighs> such is life. Hopefully by the time this video goes up, I haven't crashed. I'm hoping for no crashes and I'll have started my new job when this goes up. So Alana of the future, if you're watching this, I'm sure things are going fine. Take a deep breath. New jobs are scary. You're gonna do fine. Relax. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.